All right, good day, night, evening, whatever time may be, ladies and gentlemen. This is Syllabus. Hopefully, you guys have been all right. Sorry for not doing an upload. It's been a while, I know. Uh, today, we're going to cover the newest fractal, Siren's Reef. Now, this one was actually kind of fun. Um, the run you're going to see is just a random run with my guild. It was mostly clean. I died once and I had fun with the boss, but we will get through it with you guys. Do not worry. Uh, so you're going to start off and you're going to run over here to win it. I uh, can never say his name right. And you're going to start the events. So your main event is going to be taking out a bunch of Sorens or dinosaurs. Mostly Bristleback, Bristlebacks, some Bonebreakers, I think this is what they're called. Uh, there's four of them in total on uh, Fractal 12, so they are fairly easy to take down. Nothing too hard to worry about. Again, just watch the Bristleback and their little machine gun fire thing and watch the smog scale. That's what they're called, I guess, uh, for their jump around attack. That sucks. Also, yay, Pocket Raptor is everybody's favorite enemy from Heart of Thorns. And then you're going to run into your first boss, the Frenzied Stone or the Champion Stonehead. So this boss is fairly easy when he jumps up like he's going to do here in a second uh, and does a front flip. Just make sure you are not in front of him. So here comes his attack, and as you can see, he creates a little shockwave. Those hurt. I can vouch those hurt. Just watch out for him. When he hits about, I think, 25% HP or so, he's going to run off and break through these rocks. He's going to step on a bunch of mines and die, so you don't even get the thrill to kill. But you're going to run into this cannon right here, so you're going to grab, jump on the cannon, and you'll see those mines. Uh, you just got to fire the cannon to destroy the mines, so your party can get through there pretty decently. And it'll also blow up in a hole for you to continue. So, holes open. Time to head into the Forgotten Fort. Now, in here are a cubic butt ton of ghosts. Uh, these guys are fairly easy to take down. Just a bunch of vets and soldiers. Nothing too hard to take down. But once you do finish off all the ghosts, and yes, you can use ghostly cannons to attack uh, from up above, this guy will spawn... Blasting Black Peter. Now, this guy is fairly easy. Uh, I beat him solo. <laughs> um, usually when fractals come out, I try to run them solo to get used to the mechanics I can get a hold of. Uh, this guy is just a straightforward fight. Just avoid the bombs he likes throwing down. And I will say this, he loves throwing down his bombs. So stay out of the AoE, and this fight should go swimmingly. And yay, more pocket raptors. <laughs> um... Overall, this fractal is pretty good. It's fairly quick until you get to the end. Um, the first two bosses, the Stonehead and Peter, uh, they're fairly quick. Nothing you have to really worry about. Nothing you really have to get too engraved in. Um, but once you get into here is when things slow down a little bit. So there's going to be all these coin purse type things and these spiritual uh, watchdogs. So when you pick up a coin purse, you're going to get two debuffs. So as long as you hold the coin purse, your energy goes down to where you cannot dodge and you're going to get slower the longer you hold on to it. What you're supposed to do is one person is supposed to pick up the coin purse and you're supposed to toss it in between you and your party. And you can't throw it and you can't catch it as you can see by that circle there. Um, I just ran through and I got this thing done by myself and stupid phone shut up. Sorry about that. But uh, you don't want to get caught by the ghostly sentries because if you get caught in that circle, they will summon into a few ads and they can be a little bit of a pain. The circles are a little forgiving as you'll see here in a second. I'm actually going to kind of dip my toe into the circle and pick this one up. But if the ghostly guys see there is a coin purse on the floor and it's within their circle, they're going to stick to it. And yes, you can throw the coin purses into the chest at the end. On level 12, you're going to be collecting three different coin purses. Higher levels, you may have more. But as you can see here, some of the enemies that the little sentries spawn for us. Uh, my group's going to sit here and throw this last one between each other. So you'll see us kind of having fun playing a hot potato with the bag. <laughs> Just throwing it back and forth. But, yep, once you get all of the coin purses into the treasure chest, you are good to go. And welcome to the final area of Siren's Reef. 
Now, you can still throw the chest that the coin purse is going to, and it still does give you the debuff. Now, you're going to be collecting three of these chests. One is from the area we were just in. Uh, and then there's two more in between uh, two fights. So we're going to set the chest down right over here. As Scorch catches it. Now, there's going to be two cannons. You're going to want people manning those, because as soon as somebody picks up the chest from over here, more ghosts are going to spawn. And there's going to be one ghost whose main job is to steal the chest back. So you're going to want as much firepower going down as he, on these ghosts as you can. So I'm going to run back a little bit. I'm going to throw it over here. He's going to throw it back, and then we're going to throw it to the middle. And up comes the first boss. Mad Jack Squall. Now, these fights are pretty straightforward. There's nothing really you have to watch out for. Uh, until you get a little bit later into the fights. So Mad Jack Squall is pretty easy. Just, again, avoid the AoE as much as you can. Apparently he's an elementalist that likes to uh, call down... I won't say the thunder because that was snow. So call down uh, the snow. But his fight is very fairly straightforward. Just keep DPSing him until he goes away. Uh, once he's dead, just hang back, take out the rest of the adds, and then you will have another chest in the north that spawns. Uh, same process, you're going to want to have a few people manning the cannons and have one or two people run down and grab the chest because, again, it does slow you down. Also, avoid swimming in the water. I learned this one the hard way, and you'll see me nearly die. There's piranhas in there, and they like people. Like, they really like people. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up the chest. I'm going to get his little heels off and... I accidentally threw the chest back because I was targeted and I do auto target on my bar, so I kind of died because I fell into the piranha pool again, but we got back up. And now comes fir first mate Calyx. Char, fairly easy fight. Uh, again, just avoid the AoE, avoid his little shotgun blast you'll see right there. Other than that, boss is, again, just a cakewalk. Take him down, DPS him down, and goodbye, Mr. Char. Now, once first mate Calyx is down, the next objective is going to hit, and you are going to have to uh, keep the zone clean of ghosts. So, as you see, defend the ship. So, there's going to be a bunch of ghosts spawning from north and south. Uh, four people on the cannons, at least on T1, so Fractal 12. Piece of cake. You're not going to have any troubles. I just ran down the board over here and attacked because why not it was fun i liked it but you'll see how many ghosts get routed uh, up in the top right once that bar is full then the final boss will spawn captain crow now we got to explain a few mechanics that were present in the other fight but weren't as important uh you will see part of the deck of the ship uh long ways get covered in an aoe that will blow you off of the ship and throw you into the piranha infested water uh, then you also have this green circle. Now, I'm going to admit right now, I don't know what the green circle does. It summons the shark when it ends, but it does not stop tracking you, so the shark always spawns on you. I don't know how to get rid of it. I don't know if there's some other mechanic that goes along with it. I just know shark. <laughs> so you'll see me get pushed off here once or twice, and like I said, I was running with my guild. So, yeah, do enjoy uh, the fight. Uh, she does have a few P NPCs that will spawn with her that will give her buffs. I believe it's her first mate is one of them that does it. Uh, gives her protection and stuff like that. So if you're getting tired of the protection, just down the first mate and get back on Crow until I guess the first mate responds. But as you can see over in the left-hand corner, my party's dead. And I'm sitting here in my mind going, I wonder if I can solo the boss because I got to the first chest by myself but I could not get it to the ship fast enough without dying. I was like, I wonder if I could kill the boss. So yeah, I kind of went uh, a little crazy. And I will say this, thank you devs for the skill rise, because that literally saved my butt during this fight. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I said I died once and I died a few little ways ago. So I actually do clear this boss from about 40% HP by myself. So that goes to show how much of a pushover this boss is, at least on T12, on a uh, fractal level 12.
So yeah, there's the boss. <laughs> yeah, we kicked its butt. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, I do want to thank my guild members. Their names are up on screen right now. Obviously in Crichton. Uh, other than that, hopefully you guys do enjoy. Hopefully this helps you out with uh, Fractal 12. Uh, sorry for being away for so long. I know I haven't uploaded a video in a while. Um, I've been lazy. That is like, literally the only thing I can say is I've been lazy. Um, I am going to be writing a fan fiction again here soon. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I wrote a fan fiction uh, story uh, based in Guild Wars 2 about taking out Kalkatork. And I go into my own lore how I think the game should have been uh, sent in, how I think the game should have gone. And a few people liked it, so I decided, hey, let's write a sequel. So I'm currently in the process of writing that. Uh, if you guys are interested, please leave a comment down below and I'll post a link to it or something in the comments or in the description box or something like that. And you can go take a look for, uh, take a look at it yourself. I'm not the best writer in the world. My whole thought process going into this was, as long as I can write something better than my immortal, I'm happy. And so far it seems like I did, so I'm happy. Uh, other than that, I do have a few ideas I need to work on. Again, I've just been lazy. I need to stop being lazy. Uh, and I will get another video video to you guys out soon. Um, I don't know how the raids are going to work. I still haven't found a decent group that can run them. I think the guild I'm in right now has been trying to run Karen, so t uh, Wing 5? E no, Wing 4. Wing 5 be Hall Chains. Uh, so Wing 4, so um, I can't remember what it's called. But uh, yeah, I really haven't seen what the skill can do just yet. I'm usually, I'm just in there to be a helper, teach fractals and stuff like that. But uh, if you guys have any ideas on a guild that you'd possibly want uh, me to run in, let me know. I do have uh, guild spaces and stuff like that. Um, I do have a uh, druid and a renegade condi ready to run. But I mean, you guys have seen the renegade condi. You've seen a few videos. I'm rambling right now. Hope you guys enjoyed. We will definitely see you next time. And again, I am sorry for the long delay. Hopefully you all had a good New Year's as well. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.